Hey guys, glad you joined me today for another devotion. I hope that all of you are doing great. But for today, I wanted to talk to you guys about self-image and the importance of remembering who you are to God. So first, let us pray, and then we'll dive into today's devotion. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for your beautiful word. We thank you for these opportunities we come together to study as a group. Lord, we thank you for the technology to be able to do these types of things. God, we, we, just, we come together just hoping that you open our hearts and minds. Lord, we love you and thank you. We pray for wisdom as we enter into your word. In your good and gracious name, amen. So, like I said, self-image. So our topic today is going to bring us into the Old Testament as we study a man named Moses. And I know that when you hear his name, a great many things come to mind, right? The ten plagues, parting the Red Sea, wandering through the wilderness, being put into a basket and found by Egyptians and raised by Egyptians. But I think there's a part of the story that we often do not pay much attention to, and that's where it leads us today about our self-image. So we're going to look closely into Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. So we won't be going into the entire story. We're actually going to read a few little snippets out of chapter 3 and chapter 4. But as always, I encourage you to read the entire story because there is a lot in there, a lot to take, and a lot God can show and teach you. So as you read it, ask God for wisdom. He gives it freely. So before we dive into chapter 3, verses 11 through 12, I want to kind of give you a quick synopsis so you kind of know where we're at in the story. Now, we know Moses grew up Egyptian because um, he was put in a basket, found by the Egyptian princess because the, the Egyptians were killing Israelite babies and the mother couldn't take it. And, and he was found by the Egyptian princess and raised as an Egyptian. And then we know that he murders an Egyptian because he figures out later that he's a, a, a Hebrew. And then he gets scared when uh, two Hebrews are fighting. He confronts one of them and they said, oh, are you going to murder me like you did the Egyptian? And he goes, okay, I'm out of here. So we know he's been in the desert with his uh, father-in-law Jethro. And so he's coming up to this God's mountain right now, right? We're going to get into the burning bush. But I kind of want us to look at Moses' conversation and God's answers to part of his conversation. Because we're going to see where his image was kind of mistrewed throughout. Okay, so let's start with chapter 3, verses 11 through 12. Okay, so remember, this, this, this flaming bush is right here and God's talking to him. But Moses said to God, who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God said, I will be with you and this will be the sign to you that is... I who have sent you when you when you have brought the people out of Egypt you will worship God on this mountain so here he goes well God who am I I'm just some dude I, I can't do this and I think that's what happens with us sometimes as, as believers who am I I'm not built for this that's not my that's not up my alley but what is God's response I'm with you don't doubt who you are I'm with you I give you the strength and encouragement to do these things. So when you feel like you're like, who am I? I'm nobody. You are somebody. Moses was somebody. Right? And we're God knows every hair on your head. Right? So we, he, we mean something to him. And if we mean something to him, we should mean something to ourselves. Because God has un, unfound love for his children. Okay? So here we have Moses questioning who he is. I'm nobody. God say you are somebody because I'm with you. That alone in itself is, is grand. So let's go to chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Moses answered. Now he is still having a conversation at the burning bush and God's trying to get him to go tell us, talk, talk to the people. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me? What if these Israelites, when I go talk to them and tell them that you're here to free them, what if they don't believe me? Or listen to me, Lord... Did not appear to you. This is what they're going to say to me. Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground, and, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out 
took hold of the snake and it turned back to a staff. Then the Lord said, It's so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. So here God is saying, listen, I'm showing you these great wonders. I'm doing things in your life. We see the snake, but there are things that God does in our life. He shows us how important we are to him. We may not physically have to reach up, pick up a stick, and turn into a snake. But there are things that happen in our life that God shows us how important we are to him. Sometimes it's just a matter of reaching out in faith and grabbing it and letting it turn into something that God has for us. Chapter, our last, our last set of verses, chapter 4, 10 through 14, okay? Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. So Moses is like, I'm not capable of doing this. I'm not good at these things or good at those things. I'm just some Joe Schmo. Who am I, right? We go back to chapter 3. Who am I? And here is God. The Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? It is, is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. So here God said, you, you think you're not capable. You're not good at these things. You're, you don't look at yourself in a way that you're capable of these things. And God's saying, I made you, right? We, I, you were created in my image, not your image, my image. I gave you the very tongue that you used to speak, right? I am with you. I will never leave nor forsake you. I'm always behind you. I know every hair on your head, right? I created you. You are something special. You are precious in my sight, Moses. Stop worrying about what you look like and just go out and do what I'm telling you to do. So that's my, that's my, my, uh, what I really want to portray to you guys today is to, to, to understand who you are to God. Who cares what other people around you think? You were created to do something amazing for God. Just like Moses. I mean, we hear, we read about Moses and think he's grandiose, but we all are special in our own right to God. We all have special gifts that he gives us that make us do amazing things. And so I want you guys to understand that when you're lacking in your self-image, when you don't feel like, I don't know, man, remember, God loves you. He knows who you are individually. You were created by him, right? You were created in his image. Don't, don't worry about what other pe people think of you. Worry about what God thinks of you. Because at the end of the day, you answer to him. You don't answer to them. So... I know it's tough, and I know sometimes we get in our own heads. And say, but listen, that's what this thing is for. That's what renewal of your mind is about. Reading your Bible, staying in prayer. God help me with this. I feel like I'm lacking here. I feel like I'm this over there. And God has your back. I love you guys. I thank you for joining me. I hope this was a blessing to someone. Love you. you guys have a blessed week.